Hey Church family, I came across the results of a survey this week that said that folk in the U.S. are more unhappy today than they've been in nearly 50 years. Coincidentally, I came across an interesting term in my reading this past week, and that term is the news blues. The news blues. Have you ever heard of the news blues? Even if you're not familiar with that specific term, you are certainly familiar with the concept. It's bad news fatigue or the feeling you get from taking in too much bad news. And it's definitely led to an increase in anxiety among a lot of us. And I was thinking about why that is. I mean, all things considered, has the world as a whole really gotten that much worse than it was when you and I were kids? Okay, the pandemic is a new thing, and I do not want to underestimate the impact of that. But aside from the pandemic, the issues plaguing our world today are most likely the same issues that we've been wrestling with for a long time. So what has changed? Well, I'll tell you two things that have changed. Number one, we are less socially connected today than we've ever been. And what I'm talking about is something that goes back pre-COVID-19 and pre-social distancing. What do I mean when I say we're less socially connected? What I mean that is in that a lot of areas we've replaced relationships with technology. We've got more Facebook friends than ever before and fewer real life friends than ever before. In years gone by people did life together much more than we do now. Today we sit glued to our smartphones or we binge watch Netflix and I think that that decrease in real relationships corresponds to an increase in anxiety. God created us to do life together, to do life in community, and this is why you'll always hear us talking about the importance of getting into a life group and getting involved in serving. Because outside of salvation and baptism, I think these are the two most important next steps you could take for your own spiritual growth. Which is why you may hear us ask you, who are you serving? Or who are you doing life with? These are the two most important steps you can take, not just for your spiritual health, but also for your mental and emotional health. A second key factor is that beyond the fact that we're less connected is that we're more aware of bad news than ever before. You might say, well, there is more bad news today than ever before, and I think you could argue that point. But one thing you can't argue is that the speed with which we receive bad news is faster than it has ever been. What do I mean by that? Well, think about it this way. The other morning I woke up to hear the news of a building that North Korea blew up that contained a diplomatic office that it shared with South Korea. Now the reality is that North Korea has been test firing missiles and blowing up stuff for as long as there's been in North Korea. But in my parents' generation, they would have had to wait days, if not weeks, before they would receive news and see pictures of an event like that. Whereas now, through the wonders of technology, you and I can watch it live as it unfolds. The Bad News Blues has been around as long as we've had bad news, which is why God directed Paul to tell us that instead of focusing on the awful news of the day, we should think about whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. He tells us if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, we should think about such things. When God designed the human heart, he created it for life in a harmonious world. We have trouble finding our footing in a world of disunity, pain, and sorrow. So I want to make a sincere suggestion to you today. Turn off the news. Not forever, but maybe for a day. Take a break from the sorrow. It'll still be there tomorrow. Instead of dwelling on the pain, spend today thinking about eight, and only eight types of things. True things, like the fact that God loves you and has given you a great gift called life. Noble things, like saying things respectfully to your elders and finding words that complement your children's accomplishments right things, like doing the right thing, even when you feel like doing something you know would hurt someone else. Pure things, which means examining your motives and doing things without a personal or hidden agenda. Lovely things, as in things that promote brotherly love. Admirable things, the word here means things that will cause others to say, that was so well said. Excellent things, things that reflect virtue. Praiseworthy things, things that people will praise. You can't focus on these types of good news if your brain is brimming over with bad news. 
On the flip side, you cannot have the news blues if you fill your mind with true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, and praiseworthy thoughts. If you spend your day thinking positive thoughts, you're likely to do some positive things. And if you do some positive things, the world will be a better place. And isn't that what you were hoping to find by watching the news anyway? Instead of watching the news, let's make the news today. Let's let good thoughts generate some good deeds, and that'll make it a good day. Amen.